Short answer. The canoe has a hull that is open at the top, while the kayak is covered over the top of the hull. There is more to it than that, but the covered top of the kayak is important to why canoes and kayaks are different. First off, both the canoe and the kayak are small and nimble crafts that are long and narrow. Both are also lightweight and can traditionally be made from many different materials, although the canoe has a wider array of materials. The canoe is overall made for transport of people and goods on rivers and lakes. It scales very well, going from the well-known size for one to two people and upwards to small groups or much cargo. The kayak, contrary, is made for a single person and is a hunting vessel mainly for use in the Arctic Ocean. The canoe has a relatively high freeboard and the crew often sit rather high up relative to the water. Canoes are in relation to this position up from the water, rowed with a paddle with a blade on one end that set vertically into the water. The kayak, contrary, has a very low freeboard which also necessitates the cover over the top of the kayak. This protects from water running over the sides and into the kayak. The crewman on the kayak equally sits very low in the water and the kayak paddle is double bladed and set horizontally into the water while being handled from the middle. The paddles of the canoe and kayak are thus handled very differently with the canoe paddle being moved from side to side with each stroke and the force of the stroke coming from the top end. The kayak paddle is not moved from side to side but the rotary motion of the handling in the middle changes the blade that enters the water from one side to the other. The rowing or paddling of the canoe and the kayak are thus very different from each other. And the reason for this is the difference of the position of the rowers relative to the surface of the water. This owes much to the difference in use of the two. The canoe is mainly used for transport while the kayak is used directly for hunting. Both the canoe and the kayak are native to North America, but where the canoe was used across the continent, on the rivers and lakes, the kayak was made for the ocean of the Arctic archipelago and Greenland. More specifically, the kayak was made to venture out from settlements to hunt for sea mammals. Seals were among the preferred prey. The hunter in his kayak would need to sneak up on the seals while they were lying on the sea ice. The hunter would then harpoon the seal and drag it in if he had hunting luck. It is not an easy task to sneak in on a seal, so the kayak needed to have its low profile to stay hidden behind the ice and the hunter would bend down over the cover of the kayak to stay even lower. The many soft strokes of the kayak paddle also meant that the paddling can be done very silently compared to more forceful paddle strokes where the paddle is raised and moved more. This makes the kayak excellent for hunting arctic sea mammals and for moving fast through these waters. The kayak thus originally was primarily related to the Inuits. The canoe further south was mainly a design of the Indians of the vast forests. This also influenced the materials used greatly. Today modern kayaks are mostly made of plastic while canoes are made of plastic or aluminium due to its use in freshwater environments. Both are also available in wood, especially for self-builders. But in the past, both the kayak and the canoe were defined by the available materials in the vicinity of where they were built. Given that the kayak was native to the treeless arctic regions of the Inuit, they were almost exclusively made from the skin and bone of the marine mammals that the Inuit hunted and in the case of the reindeer Inuit, it would be made of the skin and bone of the reindeer. The Inuit also had a source of wood in driftwood, which could be used, but would mostly be used for building dog sledge rather than kayaks. The canoe could also be made from skin and bone, but due to its origin in the forested regions of North America, it had a much larger range of possible materials. The material used would thus depend on what was most readily available in the area. The by far most sturdy version would be a dug-out canoe 
which is known from across the world, where a tree trunk would be cut to shape and hollowed out with an axe or fire. This would also be the most labor-intensive canoe to make, but it would last long and be able to take quite a beating. Alternatively, a canoe could be made of large pieces of bark, peeled from trees and fitted to a frame of branches like with a skin canoe. The canoe of the Indians thus mirrored the much more readily available land-based materials that they had on hand in their native environment. Both the canoe and the kayak are small lightweight crafts fitted to their environment, but the kayak is much more specialized as a hunting vessel than the canoe. The Inuit Dutch also used a canoe-like boat called the Umiak for the transport needs that could not possibly be covered by the small frame of the kayak. The umiak would also be used by the women, children and elderly when a settlement moved from one hunting ground to another. In winter, dog sledges would be replacing both the kayak and umiak when the sea froze. It is thus clear that the kayak and canoe, despite both being small crafts, are indeed very different and with different uses. They were made for different environments, with the kayak being more specialized, but both are excellent for traveling lightweight over water.